down to the depths of hell or the sewers of Paris. Like Jason previously pointed out, I do remember, like he, he said, that the uh, sewers do go are under the streets exactly. So pretty much the sewage, sewage system is really big in Paris. In Paris, I mean, really big, as big as the big as the whole freaking city. It was a shiny red plastic ball sat incongruously on the slippery green slimed floor. As I picked up the plastic ball, I realized it was intended to be worn. Like a nose? Maybe? It was the clown's red nose. That definitely points that he had gone through here. What else do we find? We find... It was a soggy, crumpled paper tissue. Oh, great. A, pa a soggy paper tissue in the sewer. Are you really sure you want to pick that up there, George? I know we need to, but still. I scooped up the sodden tissue. It was cold and greasy, like the breakfast leftovers. Yeah. The nose was hollow. Printed on the inside were the words, La Vise du Monde, Paris. It was the soggy tissue I'd found in the sewers. The railing was put there for a simple reason, to stop people getting past. It worked. Especially with spikes like those, I wouldn't go past it. I might get stuck on it. It was a small scrap of cloth caught on the rusting spike. Looks very colorful. And green. I took hold of the scrap of material and unsnagged it from the spike. It was the scrap of material I'd found in the sewer. Well, that was fun. He tested if the iron bars stood still. They did. So where does this lead to? Oh, hello. Hi there. Hold it right there. Hey! I knew you'd come back, and now I've got you. Who? Oh. What are you talking about? You're trespassing. Come out of there immediately. That's what I'm trying to do. Give me your hand. Nice car. Ha! You won't catch me with tricks like that. Old school Citroën. Keep your distance, Monsieur. Okay, okay. Now, what were you looking? For? A clown. I was looking for a clown. Huh. Ridiculous. Do you really expect me to believe that? Yeah. He planted a bomb in the cafe and blew it up. What? The cafe? Blown up? You didn't hear the no, huge explosion? You, that is awful. And you say the person responsible was dressed as a clown? Oui, oui, That's monsieur. Right. He blew up the cafe, escaped into the sewer, changed his clothes, and came up here. Ah, mon dieu! And then, the man I chased. Do you think that man and the clown are... What one, one and the same? Yes. Well, yes, it had crossed my mind. Ah, that still does not explain what you are doing down the sewer. Chasing oh, him. I know, you are in league with him. Oh no, I'm just a tourist. <laughs> Most toys are content with the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, or the Pigalle. I didn't realize my waste pipes were such an attraction. Hey, the sewers is a big part of history of Paris. There might be something very interesting to find there. Despite the poop and all this and uh, everything else. I mean, I meant the historical wise. Do you recognize this material? I am not telling you anything. Okay. What does this tissue mean to you? Nothing, monsieur. It's uh, disgusting. What on earth possessed you to show it to me? Someone has emptied their nostrils into it. Well, it looks white. So I'm not sure if it was nostrils. If you can, what I mean. 
<laughs> tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> what is there to tell? He was a typical criminal type. <laughs> Just like you. But we're not a criminal. Perhaps you'd like to take a look at my card? Mm -hmm. What is this? Inspector Augustin Rosso? What does that say? Hominoid division? A homicide. I think the ink's smudged. Mm -hmm. Then you are not a tourist. Okay, I'm not. I lied to you. And I'm sorry. Don't apologize, monsieur. You know, I had a feeling there was something different about you. Mm, sure. It is your posture, your, your poise. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. There is no mistaking the bearing of a, a disciplined man. And uh, I should know. I was in the army, you know. Yeah, sure. When I was your age, I was fighting for my life in the African desert. How can I help you, Inspector? Let's start over from the beginning and tell it just like it was. I'm sure you were in the army and, um, and apparently just showing a business card is enough to prove that you're a police officer. Yeah, no need to show any ID or badge. Just show a business card. This guy... He's a moron. I'm sorry to say, he is an old fool. Does this piece of material mean anything to you? Ah, that is the same cloth as the jacket I found. I'd recognize that pattern anywhere. Can we have the jacket? Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> he was a mean one, monsieur. He You're a mean one. Unlocked. His face, suddenly next to mine. His grip was like iron. But he did not know what he was up against. Oh no. He made a big mistake when he took on one of the desert hyenas. Yes, yes, I get the picture. So you freed yourself from the arm lock. Nice. Now, about the jacket you found. Do you have it here? No, monsieur. One of the sleeves was badly torn. So, I sent it for repair. <laughs> a pity, because otherwise, it was a fine piece of quality tailoring. It had the tailor's name inside, on the label. You found a jacket that came from a guy who came from uh, the sewer who attacked you. And you sent the jacket for repairs? What's wrong with you? I mean, seriously, what is wrong with you? Huh? Ugh. These people don't make sense. Where did you send the jacket? I gave it to an itinerant Romani seamstress. Just my luck. Was there anything in the jacket pockets? Mm -hmm. Not a suit. You know what I think? Do tell me. He changed out of the clown suit and cunningly disguised himself as an ordinary person. No. Hmm. Looks like I'm up against a mastermind. And also, you're dealing with a moron here. What was the name on the label? Ah, it was a foreign name. Todrick, I think. Did you get the address? There wasn't one, monsieur. Only a telephone number. Well, I don't expect you to remember a phone number you've only seen once. 74980859. You're kidding. That's his phone number? Yes, that is a little secret number that I learned in the desert. Okay, I you're... I was taught the technique by a Tuareg chef. That's incredible. <laughs> it comes in handy at the supermarket checkout. No, I'm sure it does. Do I get a reward? Honesty, monsieur, is its own reward. Then I'm glad I do not rely on honesty to pay the bills. True, true. And I'm sorry I called you a moron. You actually are a little smarter than I initially thought. But you still have some moronic uh, aspects about you. Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. 
Do you know the waitress at the cafe? So you don't want to hear about my experiences in the desert? No. I thought to make this country what it is today. Sure. I'm sure you did, but I'm a little short of time. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? <laughs> you, you, you can't suspect her, surely. Just answer the question, please. Yes, sir. I know her. Quite well, you could say. Uh, she came to work at the cafe oh, uh, six, uh, seven months ago. I look forward all week to the relief she gives me when she visits. Um. Really? So you'd miss her if she wasn't there? Oh, mais oui. Who else would I find to cut my toenails? You! Don't say it like that! That's just uh, disturbing! You is you got to make the nails. You are a sick man. Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Why yes, he was, clutched in his arms like a baby. That belonged to his victim. Oh, what do you think was in it? Drugs, stolen jewels. I don't know, but the killer thought it was worth a man's life. <laughs> Nothing is worth that, Monsieur. That's what you think. Many things can be worth a man's life. That's what heroes are. I am going to be quiet about this now. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Take a look at this false nose. Aha! Uh -huh. That looks like a clown's nose to me. Ah, but Precisely. you're wrong! He must have dropped it in his panic. Unless... He wanted you to find it. Why would Why he? Why would he want to do that? I was just about to say. Put me off the scent. Put me off the scent by dropping uh, obvious evidence. Okay, Mama, out of here. I'm done with you. I have to be going. Thanks to your help, the citizens of Paris can sleep a little easier tonight. Vraiment? I was only doing my duty, Monsieur. Sure. Good luck, Inspector. I hope you catch that killer soon. Me too. You Thank you. Ugh. What a character. I hope you find your man, Inspector. So do I. We all do. I really forgot that the music gets some sometimes really loud, like he, he, right at this point. I really had forgotten that that happens, that it gets so loud. I want to use the phone, because now we have some phone numbers to kill. I shall call Bonjour, me. Oh, hi. It's George Stobart, the American at the cafe. Ah, oh, oui. Uh, you said to call if I could help. Have you any news for me? You bet. I met a witness who spoke to the clown. And I know where the killer gets his suits. No kidding. Hey, I'm impressed. You are? Well, it wasn't easy. Look, why don't you come here to my apartment? Mm -hmm. Fine. Where do you live? 361 Rue Jarry. Okay, I'll come right over. We'll be there in a jiffy, my lady. But first, another phone call. Hello? Who is this? Hi, my name's George Stobart. You don't know me. Correct, Mr. Stobart, I don't. What can I do for you? Well, I'm trying to trace one of your customers. Could I maybe come over and talk to you? No, no, that's not possible. Oh, okay, uh, forget it. Listen, all I want is a name. What are you talking about? Who are you working for? I guess you might say I'm acting in the interests of truth and justice. Ah, oh, thank God. I thought you were the police. There are innocent lives at stake, Mr. Todrick. Lives that you could save. You're collecting for charity, yes? No, I'm not. All I want from you is information. Go on. I'm listening. Kind of a weird tailor. He's supposed to be a tailor or something like that. If you were a tailor, or any kind of uh, service worker. Would you answer the phone like, Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> Not very good for your business now, is it? 
Especially when you're paranoid as he is. I mean, seriously. Oh, uh, I thought you weren't the police. Why would you think that we were the police? You're definitely involved in something that you don't want to be involved in. Is every character in this game... I didn't remember that these characters are this weird. The only, only normal people we have met so far are George and Nicole. Everybody else is weird. Do you know a guy called Plantar? No, I never heard of him. What do you know about the clown who bombed the Café de la Chandelle Vert? I don't have no idea what you're talking about. You're cool, Todrick. But I think you know more than you're saying. I don't know who you'll be, but sure I am, you don't know what you're talking about. I don't know if you're saying that to make me think you don't know what I mean, but... Oh, this is ridiculous. Quit playing games with me, Todrick. I tell you, I know nothing about no clown. Yeah, that was a good point, Viso. Uh, are you a police? No? Oh, good, then I can tell you everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. Because we're not the police, you can tell me everything. <sighs> Shall I tell you what happened to Plantar? How he was killed in cold blood? I told you, I never heard of Plantar. I expect Plantar's a family man, don't you? In their little apartment, Madame Plantar is cooking the supper, listening for the familiar sound of her husband's key in the door. Junior is waiting for his daddy to come home from work. He can't wait to show him the merit marks he earned in school today. Only tonight, Monsieur Plantar won't be coming home. You're cold. Got the puppy, huh? The faithful puppy dog. Waiting for the sound of his master's voice. True. Well, maybe they don't have a dog. What do you think? I don't know, Planta. I never heard of Planta. None of this has anything to do with me. Did you know that one of your customers was a part-time clown? If a guy feels happy with a funny nose and custard down his pants, what's the problem? Well, the problem is he's a killer. Thanks for nothing, Todrick. Well, that was fruitless. Pointless. Well, mostly fruitless. And George never said that he's not the police. Yeah, true. He never did. Todrick only assumed that he's not the police. And still told him whatever he wanted. I mean, I mean seriously. George didn't even say what he was. The shop window featured a display of gowns and women's stuff. Women's stuff. You mean clothing? Usually it's clothing. It wasn't the style of the clothes in the shop that caught my eye, but the prices. The same amount of money would feed a starving family for the rest of their lives. I guess people who buy that kind of stuff don't have a problem with their consciences. So it's an expensive... It was a food store selling fruit and vegetables. High class clothing there. It's kind of interesting that if it is a high class clothing shop, why don't they have a big sign? I glanced without much interest at the fruit. It was dusty, shriveled, and tired looking. Dusty fruit? Ew! What kind of a shop has dusty fruit? Well, apparently a very crappy fruit store. They were lilies or tulips. Some kind of flowers, anyhow. Pretty, I guess, if you like that sort of thing. Me? I couldn't see the point of buying something that was already half dead. Well, if you can, if you take really good care of them, they stay alive for a long time. I mean, I got flowers that I have keep, been able to keep alive for three months almost. So there. The woman was doing something with a pair of needles that couldn't be described as knitting. She was a cheery old soul. The kind you'd walk across the street to avoid. Really? Just because I she's deeply, cheery. Expecting to experience the scent of the flowers. What I got was traffic fumes. Well, you gotta put your face right into the flowers if you want to get a good scent with the traffic behind you. I mean, seriously, in a place like this with the open streets, you're not gonna get any kind of the scent. The door was shabby and in need of a coat of paint. I couldn't imagine the Collard woman living here. Why not? Looks like a nice neighborhood. 
I pushed against the door, but it seemed to be locked. Well, let's talk to the lady. Maybe she can help us. Oh, hi. Oh, hi, Bonjour, Mark. Monsieur. Would you like me to foretell your future? Uh, no thanks. Great. I'm very good. And it only takes a minute. More thanks kooky all people. The same, but I'm not superstitious. Besides, if it only takes a minute, that's not much of a future to look forward to. Ah, uh, true. And also... Why do we keep meeting more and more weird people? Can't we meet somebody normal for a change? Seriously? Do you know a young woman called Nicole Collard? Yes, I do. She lives upstairs from me, in the apartment block across the street. I tried the door, but it's locked. You know, I've told the landlord about that a million times. It is the dam. The whole building is like a sponge. It sucks up the moisture from God knows where. You mean the door is stuck because it's swollen? That is correct. There is an art to opening it. Don't shove it hard. Just give it a gentle nudge above the lock. Thanks for the advice. Well, that's what happens to wooden doors. They get swollen if there's too much humidity around. Although this place doesn't look like it has a lot of humidity because these trees are... I'm almost dead. Unless it's fall time right now. So the leaves are dropping. Dropping like flies. Are the flowers for sale? Oui, monsieur. Okay. I'll take a bunch of those white ones. I wouldn't do that if I was you. No? They are lilies, monsieur. Good choice, George. Some people associate them with death. Yup. Yikes. Thanks for telling me. You really don't know anything about flowers, do you, George? How long has Mademoiselle Collard lived here? A few months. She's in for a shock when the cold weather comes. Drafty windows, insufficient heating, it's a struggle to keep warm. The only reason I stay is because the rent is cheap. Your young lady, she deserves. I thought Mademoiselle Collard was a successful photographer. Not as successful as she makes out for all her fine clothes. Oh, I've heard her crying herself to sleep at night. That's awful. Now don't you let on that I've told you. She's proud, that one. Too proud, if you ask me. Well, she's a freelancer, so she doesn't have a steady job. That's why she might have trouble sometimes. It's not easy to get that perfect break for a story or something like that. Well, now she has a chance. With the bombing. What other flowers do you have? Dahlias. What do they signify? Insecurity. Hmm. I don't want to give her the wrong idea about me. What about the tall yellow ones? Those are iris. The flame of passion. And the little yellow ones? Sensuality. Well, they're no use to me. I want to make an impression, not jump down her throat. I've changed my mind. Will you tell my fortune? You're going on a long journey. Yeah, my, oh my. What a surprise. Can you tell me anything I don't already know? Ten francs, please, my dear. Ten francs? That's a ripoff. Please yourself. Ten francs isn't that much. How does this fortune-telling routine work? If I knew that, I wouldn't be selling flowers for a living. Sure. Haven't you ever wondered why you were blessed with the gift? Well, it's a bit like satellite television, I suppose. Some of us are born with a, a built-in receiver dish. I just happen to be one of the lucky ones. Yeah, I'm sure that's how it works. You have a radar inside your brain that catches all the cosmic relays from the skies and tells you how things will go for others. Sure. Can you really foretell the future? Only time will tell, monsieur. The strange thing is, I can't seem to see myself in the future. Other people, I have no problem. That's how it but usually when I works. I try to see what might happen to me. That must be scary. Maybe. 
I figure it's a kind of natural safety mechanism. Either that, or I don't have a future. Well, that's a downer. How about we stop talking to you then? See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. Oh ho ho ho! Because you have foretold the future that we will meet again. Ooh. Remembering the flower seller's advice, I pushed the door gently just above the lock. Yeah, that was gently alright, just to smack the door. <laughs> no door barrel or anything, the door is just open. I'm glad you could make it, monsieur. Please, call me George. Fine. I'm Nicole. Take a seat, George. George. Eh bien? And what have you been up to? I've been exploring the sewers beneath the cafe. I thought I could smell something bad. The clown used the sewer to escape and to change out of his costume. I guess he was in a hurry. He left his jacket behind. And? I got his tailor's phone number. What's more, I know where he hired the clown suit, too. He had better luck than I did. Luck, she said. Luck! Hard work, I'd call it. Yeah. What happened? I took my photographs to the editor, but he wasn't interested. Can you believe it? He told me to drop his story. Why? But you're not about to do that. Oh, no. I am going to find out what's behind these killings. You know what I think? It's a conspiracy. The police in three different countries have kept very quiet about the murder. The press don't connect them at all. They blame them on political, religious, or militant minority extremists. As always. Well, that covers just about everyone. Yep. It could be the neighbor's dog that did it. I found this false nose in the sewer. It has La Risée du Monde printed inside it. The laughing stock of the world. It's a costume shop near the Gare Saint Lazare. I'll check it out. Maybe the owner remembers who hired the clown costume. Why don't you put it on, Josh? No way am I wearing this. I look really stupid. Besides, you might have had a cold. Yeah, judging from the uh, tissue that we found. I found this tissue down the sewer. Oh, poor, that's disgusting, Josh. I think the stuff on it is grease paint, like actors use, or clowns. It's still disgusting. Get rid of it. No, it's evidence, because it's grease paint. He did clown. The clown did have white grease paint on his face. I found a piece of material near the cafe. When I showed it to the concierge, he recognized it right away. It's very distinctive, all right. Just wait until you see this. I developed the film I shot at the cafe. Here, George, it's an enlargement I made. Look what that guy's wearing. Checkered pants. The same material as I found in the sewer. That's right. This guy shouldn't be difficult to find. Oh, no? Take a close look at his left cheek. A scar in the shape of a horseshoe. Oh, a crescent moon. Interesting. So she did, did manage to take a photograph of the killer. Nice. How did Plantow get your name? For the newspaper, La Lepite. I had written an article linking two unsolved murders, one in Italy and the other in Japan. The cases were remarkably similar. A wealthy victim, no apparent motive. And a costume killer. Plantar said he could supply me with more information. Somehow, the clown must have known about our appointment. So there's been other killings around the world where a costumed killer kills somebody. And all the Interpol and everything haven't uh, put all of this together. Sounds very suspicious to me, if you ask me. But if you don't, then... Tell me more about the clown's previous victims. Do tell. The first was Arno Belota, the millionaire pharmaceutical baron. He made his money from amphetamines in the post-war slimming and diet boom. Imagine it. 
Millions of housewives literally spitting their butts off. Was he killed for his money? No. He had no living relatives, and his fortune went to the orphanage where he grew up. The only witness in the case was his Filipino au pair. She swears he was led to his death by a snowman. A snowman? Would you like to build a snowman? No, because the snowman will kill you! Okay, just asking. In a song. What about the clown's second victim? Yamada, the controversial Japanese green politician. He inherited his fortune from his father's electrochemical consortium. He was committed to dismantling Japan's automobile industry. I can't see him gaining much support with a loony policy like that. Yamada was a man of vision. He was years ahead of his time. If you say so, how did he die? At the end, or should I say, flippers of a giant emperor penguin. A snowman, a penguin, and a clown. This guy has weird taste of disguises, but they're very effective. A snowman, a penguin, and now a clown. You know, I hate to admit it, but this is scary. And I'll tell you what, I won't be accepting any invitations to costume parties. Yeah. I don't blame you for being scared. I am too. But this story could be my only chance of a big break. Or a premature death. <laughs> nice one, Sedlao. Nice one. A snowman, a penguin, and a clown walk into a bar. Maybe somebody will figure out the punchline to that. You speak very good English for a French girl. Thanks. You speak very good English from America. And also, you're speaking in a different studio. Tell me more about yourself. Oh, there is not much to tell. Well, how did you get into photography? I guess I owe that to my father. He bought my first camera. I was eight and my parents had just split up. Did you live with your father? Yes, my mother went off with her new boyfriend. I don't mind. Papa was all I needed. Four years later, he died in a plane crash. Ah, I'm sorry. Well, it's all right. I don't mind talking about him. He was more like an older brother, really. Always joking and laughing. Papa always wanted I should study art. That's why I went to college. And took up photography. Yeah. Nice. Did you learn about photography at college? Oh, God, no. I couldn't afford the materials. So what did you we do? We were built for everything we used. Paint, canvas, paper. Yeah. Most of my year turned to minimalism. It was cheaper. I used to go poaching in the park for squirrel hair. The only time I wasn't hungry was the time I did printing. I used to eat the potatoes. You're making fun of me, aren't you? Oh, no. Seriously? Girl? You gotta get yourself a better life. Do you have a boyfriend? That's none of your business. Yeah, true. May I use your telephone? Sure, go ahead. Thanks. Let's call Nicole. <laughs> Hello? Who is this? Your worst nightmare. Mr. Todrick? Oh, it's you again. What now? Did you make a suit for a man with a scar on his face? A scar in the shape of a crescent moon? Maybe. Maybe not. Tell me where I can find him and I'll leave you alone. And if I don't, I won't leave you alone. As simple as that. I can't that. tell you anything unless you give me his name. Hmm. Do you know where I can find the guy with the scar? I told you. Without a name, I can't help you. Okay. Thanks for nothing, Todrick. Again. Gotta find a name. I wonder how. Oh, eventually. I'm going back out to search for that clown. Where? Well, I guess I could visit the costume shop. Good idea. It's a good start, as any. It's better than nothing. Will George find out the name of the killer? What will he find in the costume shop? Tune in next time for the next episode of... Broken Sword.